Hello, I'm Rick and welcome to my workshop. As in the previous video, I was doing this S1 Bentley Continental and typically I'm now waiting for parts. Apparently it takes about 10 days before they even process the order and then it takes another 10 days or so to send it out to you. So, I'm stuck and I'm holding the Bentley like that because I'm so, also waiting for the M2 screws to arrive so it would fall apart without it. But never mind, because while I was waiting for that, courtesy of a eBay order, this dropped through the letterbox, a Mark 1 Ford Escort. Now I bought it because it was the shabbiest thing I could find on eBay at the time. And when I looked at it, I thought it was a bit of a, I might be able to do some sort of custom job, turn it into maybe a rally type car or just jazz it up. After looking at it, I realised that it wasn't, underneath that paint, it wasn't in bad condition. So, we dumped it in the caustic soda, as you can see, I'm doing here. Even though I'm, this is my least favourite way of removing paint from any of these die-cast models, because it tarnishes the zinc alloy bodywork. And it, I think sometimes it can do more harm than good. But nevertheless, we sort of, I, th there was, I thought there was that much paint on it that it needed something severe to move it. Also, I had some tyres off a Vauxhall Viva, which I thought will probably fit it, and they did. And remarkably, they cleaned up. They just put them in soapy water and they came up like new with the tyres. I got the impression this was one of those jobs that was just meant to be. When I took the paint off the casing, the casing itself was in really good condition. And with the paint off it, you then start to notice all the detail. And under the bonnet, the engine is remarkably well reproduced in detail with the exhaust pipe, the spark plugs, even the Rocker box nuts show and the air filter battery, it's all there, the washer bottle for the windscreen wipers is even in it. And you'll see in a minute, I'm just going to show the, the, the detail under the door panels shows up. I had, this, I had sort of thought that I would make this a restoration as much as anything, but then I decided that as I was going on that the detail on it was too good to ignore and deserved to be highlighted so then I decided that I would give it a bit of a restoration plus that's uh, Persil washing up washing up washing agent detergent um, I find it's a bit better for removing grease and grime than your normal washing up liquids and a bit of hot apply a bit of hot water to it it brought this plastic up a treat in fact the, the interior came up like new and the wind the, in all fairness the windshield came up pretty much like new um, I decided to leave the underside of the car and the plastic to show the fact that it was a 1968 car and it has had play wear and it has been worn I'm just test fitting the Viva's tyres onto it now and as you can see they've come up shiny. Also the hot water softened them and made them a bit more pliable, malleable to get onto the wheel rims, which is better for it. So they fit on. You can see in the background there's some 600 wet and dry which I've given the whole body a rub down with. And then I've gone up to a thousand and just polished it up so it's smooth. Now that's usually enough to accept paint. And with a good, a good rubbing with wet and dry, if you get it all over, you don't really need to use acetates or any other chemicals to help make the paint stick. That's what the primer's for. And as you can see later on, it does a pretty good job of it. So there are some marks on the glass, 
and it isn't laziness or I couldn't be bothered. It, it was, I literally decided the marks were so insignificant that just clean and put back, it would validate its age. It's 50 years old, it's, you know, it deserves to show that it's 50 years old. Here I are, I'm in the work, no I'm not, I'm in the back room. My workshop's under progress build at the moment. I've painted it in grey primer, it's acrylic grey primer, it's just ch uh, cheap clear coat, uh, clear, it's just what I picked up at the hardware shop, acrylic grey primer, that's a drop of water on it. And it's covered well, and it, I like this for, especially for a lighter colour, if you're painting lighter colours you want to put a darker primer on, it brings the depth into the colour. Now I'm starting to paint it with the blue paints and that was fortunate as well because I literally went into the same hardware shop and picked up an aerosol tin and the colour was described as Ford Sky Blue. Some things are just meant to be aren't they? As you can see I put it on a block and just rotate it round. If I'm I feel personally that if the model's in one place, I can pass the paint over in an equal spray. It, it just gives it a better pass of paint because you need to keep the paint can at a regular distance. And as you can see there, it's built. So if I put about four coats of paint on it. I've now decided to do, I'm now doing the detailing on the interior, the, the lining on the inside of the bonnet, the lining on the inside of the boot, the door trims, which in all fairness they were bits of hardboard with padded vinyl tacked over them. And the whole car was plastic in, inside. The, the, the dinky model and the real thing share a lot in common, that being one of them. And the door panels tended to match the interior colour. And this sky blue Ford Escort did also mainly have a red interior. So all, it, it just all worked out pretty well. The detailing going on, I think, I've no intention of actually trying to put anything back to its original condition so it doesn't look so it looks like it's just come out of a box. I think a toy car like this, it's 50 years old. It wants to show that it's been loved. The best way to show a toy it's been loved is to see show that it's had playwear on it. Which is why I was eager to leave the bottom of the bottom of the chassis casing alone. Just gave it a good clean. Oh, I think I left a bit of muck on it just for the hell of it. This is speeded up, of course, but in actual fact, I'm putting this masking tape about a millimetre into the onto the edge of it, and to get it lined up was an absolute nightmare. It, it, it stuck to my fingers better than it stuck to the paint. I'm just padding it in with cotton buds to make sure it doesn't leak. It did in a couple of places but it was easy enough to touch up. But, uh, as you can see there's all the parts there. The uh, interior is going to get painted like it would have been the original Mark 1 Ford Escort. That looks I think it was the GL models that had the carpet in, the basic models, the L models just had like rubber mats, a big rubber mat that went from the footwell in the front to the back of the back footwell. And the dashboard would have been black, black vinyl, which helped keep the cost of the car, of course the original car only cost about £800 brand new. So to keep the cost down, anything that could be made out of plastic was. 
from that, including nearly all the interior trim. Amazingly, the detail on this model actually shows the door handle, the window winder, and the uh, armrest. It's all in the moulding. Here you can see I'm just detailing the engine. The engine compartment's so detailed it's got the radiator, even got the radiator cap on it. The windscreen, wa windscreen washer bottles there, the batteries there, the air filters detailed just how it used to be. And all this added to the keenness to highlight it. I have actually left the, the, <coughs> the base of the main of the engine compartment is still in grey primer and I left it like that on purpose because it sort of contrasts and it helps you when you look under the bonnet you actually notice the engine and the exhaust pipes and the battery and the important but it's more than you notice the grey primer and of course on the real Ford Escort there wouldn't have been anything but fresh air down that gap They were extremely good cars and they stood the test of time. And of course it's what the modern Ford Focus derived from it originally. Over the years it changed shape and size. I still think this is probably the best looking Ford Escort they ever made. It was the roundest one. The Mark II was a lot squarer than this. And not quite as interesting, although it performed better. And in the background there you can see the Vauxhall Viva that's in a hell of a state. That's donated the wheels. Not donated the tyres, sorry. Anyway, I'm just detailing the seat sides they were on a black metal runner which I just put a black line underneath the bottom of the seats because the rest of the seats was you guessed it red plastic vinyl a red plastic vinyl back and a red plastic vinyl bottom especially designed so you get sweaty bums on hot days and that your kids slip, uh, slipped into the back of the seats I made a bit of a pig's ear this number play. I ended up masking it up and doing it properly. Yeah. That's it. Here we are. This is what we started off with. And now... That's it. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll let you look at these stills. And hopefully see you again soon.